Hey everyone, it's Patricia from TrangelHeaven.com. We have Miss Spidey, my Chilean Rose here, right here. And right now I'm trying to film as many videos as I can while she's actually being active. So please enjoy. She's been crawling all over her enclosure and she's just an absolute joy to watch. This is rare. She usually is hiding or sitting absolutely still for hours. So I'm so glad that she's actually doing something. But today I want to do a video on some of the most important tarantula tips, at least for me, that I've come across. These are things that have either been mentioned to me by other tarantula owners, the spirit of helping me on my tarantula keeping journey, or they're things that I've learned and researched along the way. Everybody has their own things that they feel have been the most important in terms of them getting more comfortable with tarantula keeping. Um, tarantula keeping is one of those things that like, you could do all the research in the world, but until you actually get the tarantula and like you actually observe it and go through the learning process, uh, you really can't, at least for me, you really can't uh, imagine what it's going to feel like. This is such a, foreign animal, especially if you don't have any experience with exotic animals like I didn't. And so you kind of get familiar with just being completely new with, a, with an animal that you're completely unfamiliar with. And so learning things along the way is sometimes the way to get comfortable. You can't know everything right off the bat. So the first one is about handling. I used to bother Spidey a lot my first few months having her. I was so excited. I was like in love with her. Because of that and because I was new, I would try to handle her quite often. Not every day, um, probably like once a week or so or less, but more than I ever would now. I honestly, I can't remember the last time I've held Spidey. It has been years and she is so happy that I stopped doing that. Um, I didn't know that tarantulas did not like to be held or that they were so sensitive to stress in their environment. Even when I wasn't holding her, I would be bothering her. Like I would just be opening and closing her tank, trying to watch her, um, trying to feed her when she wasn't hungry. Like I was just doing the most in the worst way, petting her. Like I did some wild stuff that I would never do now. I just didn't know how fragile they were. Tarantulas don't like being held. They don't even want to know you exist, honestly. <laughs> and so the more I've backed off, the more peaceful she is. I imagine that right now, she's a little bit more active because I had to move her from my closet to here. Um, she lives in my closet right now because of Hiss Hiss, my kitten. And I had to refill her water dish and clean it. So she might have been a little bit disturbed, but that is very once in a while. That is why every time I film a video, or videos, I'm trying to do as many as I can within that time span, like within an hour or two, because I don't wanna bother her. I don't wanna take her out of her calm space every week. So that's usually why I'm like stacking my videos whenever I film them, because it's just too much. It's too much for her. Um, and she used to be very active when I was bothering her that first year, and I thought that that meant she was happy and liked it. That is not what it means. She was probably really stressed out and unhappy. So that is one of the biggest tips that helped me and changed the way that I practiced husbandry. Another huge tip uh, that I would like to share with others that not only helped me, but I think consistently helps newbies in this hobby is just to know that water is more important than food for tarantulas. I see people all the time say, my tarantula doesn't need water, they never drink. They absolutely do. They may not drink often and they may not drink when you're around because they're nocturnal, but they do drink. And I have seen tarantulas, my own included, go years or at least, years is maybe an exaggeration, but up to two years, year and a half or so without eating. Spidey has done that several times in her life. And it used to stress me out so much. I would, especially the first few years, often think that she was dying. <laughs> it caused extreme anxiety for me. I get messages all the time, people asking, oh my god, my tarantula's not eating. And, you know, the first questions 
that I'll ask are, did you just get them? Did you just put them in a new enclosure? A lot of times tarantulas are not eating because let's say they just got home from a pet store or exotic store and it's a new environment. They sometimes t can take weeks to adjust after you've given them a new tank change or you brought them home or some big stressor happened in their environment. So that's something that I learned. But the other thing is that some tarantulas have very long premote periods. Some tarantula species just fast randomly. Chilean rosehairs like Spidey are one of those species that has this terrible reputation for being absolutely picky. And that is honestly and unfortunately something that I found to be very true. Spidey routinely will go over six months to a year without eating not interested at all. I will offer it. She is not having it. And sometimes it won't even be because of pre-malt. Spidey is an old girl. She has years between her malts. She's getting up there in age, or she is. I'm not really sure how old she is, but she is up there. And whether she's malted or not, she will just go through fasting periods. And I have found that she is okay. I will still offer the food every now and then when she's going through one of these periods, but I know now from experience watching her go through several of these cycles that she's okay as long as she has water. So I hope that that is a comfort to any tarantula owner who's maybe a little bit new and is experiencing their tarantula just deny food for months. It could be primo. Or you could have a tarantula like Spidey who just decides she wants to stop eating for nine months and then one day start eating again. It's so random. I just try my best. Um, but that does bring to my other point. Some tarantulas can go a really long time without molting. It is more normal as they get older. Um, when they're younger, they generally molt quite often. Uh, I got Spidey as an adult, so she has never had frequent molts. And I've had her for at least 10 years now, so she's even older. So her molts are years in between usually. Speaking of older spiders and molting, I think something really important for tarantula owners is to know that sometimes molting can take a really long time. Besides the food thing and the not eating thing, another question I get asked all the time, and this was something that I struggled with too, is just the molting process in general and how long it can take. Yes, some tarantulas will molt pretty quickly, um, but I understand it's a very involved process for them and it's exhausting. I mean, you're shedding everything, your organs, your entire body. <laughs> and so it takes time and often we don't need to interfere. Often the tarantula does make it out of it okay, even if it's taking a while. I learned this the hard way because um, the last two molts of Spidey's, and they were seven, several years apart, have been very long molts. And I read that that is quite common for older tarantulas. Um, she had a molt that was about 24 hours, um, maybe a little bit less. And she had another molt that I think was just a little bit over 24 hours. And, and I was honestly very nervous. I was scared because what would happen is, and I think both of these instances, but especially the last one, for at least 12 hours, it would look like nothing was happening. She'd be on her back, she'd have her molting mat, and she would just look, it would look like she was just kind of staying still. And it wouldn't be until like hour 16 that her body would kind of start pulsing like it was, you know, trying to kind of get something off of it or like start to um, get the exoskeleton off. It was incredibly stressful. Um, I, especially the last one, I was really not knowing what was going on. And I was just trying to trust the process. And it was interesting because once she got near that 24 hour mark, things started to happen pretty fast. And she has not had a bad molt crossing fingers yet. But I've also seen Spidey have some pretty quick molts as an adult where it'll take a few hours. So um, I think it's more common for her to have really super long molts right now, but um, she does still have the ability to molt quickly whenever the mood strikes. <laughs> it's very weird. Um, and when I say quickly, I mean, it takes hours versus a day. It, she'll never have a, a fast molt like a small tarantula will. But I'd like to impart this information onto people because I think sometimes the best thing we can do for tarantulas, especially as beginners, is to be patient. 
they know how to be a spider. You know, unless you see something really going wrong, then you interfere. But for the most part, if they're on their back and it's just taking a little while, they'll be okay. I'm kind of noticing that a lot of my tips actually have to do with molting. <laughs> and so this last one, which is probably one of the most important ones, is to not leave food in the enclosure. Um, one, that is because of molting. You do not want your tarantula to be going through a molt while there is an uneaten food in there because that food could actually become a predator for the spider. Your spider is gonna be very vulnerable while they're molting. They almost like can't really move because they're in that process. And so I have definitely heard of stories where a simple cockroach or a cricket or something turns into a monster or a, a predator and actually seriously harms or kills the tarantula. It's just heartbreaking. The other thing I'd say about not leaving prey items in the enclosure if your tarantula is not eating is these things can really mess up your tank. You put a lot of effort into the supplies you have, the time you take to clean the enclosure and to put fresh substrate in there and your decor. And if you leave one of these guys in there, it is possible that that cockroach could be pregnant and now you've got babies running around everywhere that you have to just completely do a tank change. That happened to me with crickets once actually. Um, or they could just gross it up. I mean, some of the tarantula food is disgusting. Like the worms and the crickets, they just like, if they die in there, they can really stink up the enclosure. And the worms in particular can like bury themselves and die and stink up the enclosure. It's just really gross, you don't want that. And you also don't want uneaten prey items to stress out your tarantula if they're not interested in eating them. My last tip, which is one that I have had to really lean into is completely protect your tarantulas from cats. I am, it is really heartbreaking to, even in situations where a tarantula owner has really taken a lot of care to either put their tarantula enclosure on a shelf or think that they have a great locking mechanism on their tarantula enclosure, it is really sad to see how often cats get into these things. This all the time and it's heartbreaking and I kind of get it because now that I have a kitten who is curious about everything, I basically have to keep spiking until I find an absolute kitten proof uh, display case that I can put her in so I can actually have her shown off in my apartment without hiss hiss getting into it. Um, so don't underestimate your cats or your kids. You know, tarantulas are very cool animals. I can definitely see a child being interested, but most of all, I can see your cats being interested, especially if they're moving around like this. A cat will get very curious, and it is possible that the cat doesn't even mean to. Maybe we all know that cats love to just walk on things or sleep on things, and so maybe the cat just wants to take a seat on the tank and the lid crashes in, and now you have the loose spider who is either gonna get lost or possibly hurt by your cat. Um, or injured. It's just, it's not a good situation. So really, really be mindful. Do not trust your pets or your children. You really have to take it upon yourself to not put anything past them. It's not intentional, but you really, but you really don't want to suffer that consequence. And it's not fair to your tarantula either, or your cat or your kid, honestly, because they likely don't really know what they're doing and they don't know that they can get hurt. Anyway, those are my tips. I hope they're helpful. Let me know what one of the most important tips for you have been in your tarantula keeping journey. And I look very forward to reading and perhaps learning from them. Take care. I will see you next week for Tarantula Tuesday.